Okay, so the question says, does the EVT apply? And if so, find the extreme ma of fx equals 3x to the fourth minus 12x cubed on the interval negative 1 to 2. No, it wasn't it. Okay. So for the extreme of 2, or for the EVT to exist, we need to make sure that our function is continuous on a closed interval, right? So we look at this and we say, all right, do we have a closed interval? Negative 1 and 2, right? And then again, do we also have uh, a continuous function? 3x to the fourth minus 12x cubed. Is that a continuous function? Right? So it says, that does the EVT apply? So therefore, we're going to want to write then the EVT applies. So we know that EVT exists because it's, uh, the function is continuous on the interval negative 1 to 2, and that's a closed interval, right? That's good. All right, the next thing is, if we want to find the extrema, guys, the extrema only lives where? The extrema only lives at the critical values and the endpoints, right? Remember like our warm-up today, right? Look at our warm-up endpoints or those critical values. So the first thing we want to do then is if we want to find the critical values, we can either find the critical values is when the derivative is equal to 0, or we can find when the derivative is undefined. So the first thing is, either way, we should find the derivative. Would you not agree? OK, so we take f of x, and let's find f prime of x. That's going to be 12x cubed minus 36x squared. Well, that is definitely a continuous function. There's no undefined values. So therefore, let's just set it equal to 0 to find the critical values where it's equal to 0. Um, I could also, let's see, factor out a 12x squared. So when I factor out a 12x squared, I'm going to left, be left with x minus uh, 12, 24, 3. Okay. So therefore, I have x equals 0 and x equals 3. Right? However, those are the critical values. But remember, guys, we're on a closed interval. Are both, these inter are both of these values inside of that interval? So 3 does not count. It's not a part of the interval. So be careful. Just because you found it, congrats to you. You found a critical value. But it's not a critical value of the interval. And remember, guys, the interval, can all, it's all relative. It's all relative based on what that interval is. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Because a lot of people will just do it. They'll be happy. They say, found it. They'll see it out as a multiple choice answer. And they say, good to go. I'm done. And then they don't go back and check the interval. right? That's where they want to trick you up. It's being going too fast and not checking your work. Yes? Uh, I just factor out a 12x. So factor out, divide out a 12x out of 12x cubed is just going to leave me with x. And then again, or you could check your work. 12x squared times x is 12x cubed. 12x squared times negative 3 gives you negative 3, 36x squared. So I just divided out a 12x squared from the top of the, from the both of those terms. Um, all right, so we have so now if we need to test, we can only test our endpoints here. Now again, but what is the question saying? The question is not saying find the critical values. That's what I asked last time. The question is saying find the extrema. That means we need to find the max and the min, right? So it can only live at the endpoints or at the critical values. So let's go ahead and figure out the f of negative 1, f of 0, and f of 2. Now again, we're not plugging them into our derivative. We just use the derivative to find the critical values. We're going back into our function, right? So we're plugging them into our function. So I'll show you guys how to do these. Um, I'll show you how to do these later. But for right now, this isn't too bad. We actually, negative 1 and 0, we can just do on our own. Negative 1 to the fourth power is just positive 1 times 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 12. So it's positive 12. So that equals 15. 0 is just going to be 0. Let's see. 2 to the fourth power is going to be 16. So that's 48. 2 to the uh, third power is going to be 8. 8 times 12 is going to be? Uh, 96. Yes, 8. 
16. Negative 48. What does that seem wrong? 2 raised to the fourth. 16 dl times 3, 48. And then negative 12 times 8. So that becomes a negative 48. Are you guys OK? Yes, no? OK. So then we need to make sure that we are writing things in complete sentences, not doing just, oh, there's my answer, and having people hopefully guess and find our stuff. So please make sure you guys write this down. F has a max of 15. at x equals negative 1, and f has a min of negative 48 at x equals 2. Do you guys see how this is very clear in what I'm doing and what I'm ex explaining to somebody? I'm not saying, oh, my work is on the page. You just go and find it and give me credit, right? No, I'm very clear 